Aerobic cellular respiration is the process by which a cell uses oxygen to synthesize ATP molecules and our aerobic cellular respiration actually involves four important processes. So we have the process of glycolysis, we have pyruvate decarboxylation, we have citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, and we have the electron transport chain that involves oxidative phosphorylation. So let's discuss each one of these processes briefly, and then let's summarize our results into the following table that basically describes how many ATP molecules are synthesized by each one of these individual processes. And let's begin with the process of glycolysis. Now, glycolysis is the breakdown of a glucose molecule into two ATP molecules, into two NADH molecules, and two pyruvate molecules. Now, actually, glycolysis produces a total of four ATP molecules, but because it uses up two ATP molecules, the net result is four minus two, or two, ATP molecules per single glucose molecule. Now, glycolysis takes place in the fluid portion of the cytoplasm of our cell, and this is known as the cytosol of our cell. And the production of ATP molecules without using the proteins of the electron transport chain is known as substrate level phosphorylation. Now, the production of ATP molecules using the electron transport chain, as we'll see in just a moment, is known as oxidative phosphorylation. So substrate level phosphorylation is the production of ATP in glycolysis and substrate level phosphorylation also occurs in the citric acid cycle as we'll see in just a moment. Now although aerobic respiration means we have oxygen present in the cell, glycolysis takes place regardless of whether or not we have oxygen present inside the cell. So that implies glycolysis is the first step of aerobic as well as anaerobic respiration. Now, once we actually synthesize our two pyruvate molecules via glycolysis, if we have oxygen present in the cell, those two pyruvate molecules will then be transported into the mitochondrial matrix of the mitochondria of our cell. And once inside the mitochondrial matrix of our cell, our two pyruvate molecules undergo a decarboxylation process in which we produce two carbon dioxide molecules, two NADH molecules, as well as two acetyl coenzyme A molecules. No ATP molecules are actually synthesized directly in the process of pyruvate decarboxylation. Now, let's move on to our citric acid cycle. The citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle, basically involves using our acetyl coenzyme A molecules produced in pyruvate decarboxylation. So basically, the citric acid cycle is an eight step cycle that transforms a single acetyl coenzyme A molecule into three NADH molecules, one GTP molecule that is later transformed into ATP, as well as one FADH2 molecule. And since we have two acetyl coenzyme A molecules produced from one glucose, the breakdown of a single glucose basically leads to the production of six NADH, two FADH2s and two GTPs, which is basically two multiplied by these quantities that we discussed earlier. Now, in the same way that the production of ATP and glycolysis takes place via substrate level phosphorylation, producing our GTP, our guanosine triphosphate, and then ATP from the GTP takes place via the substrate level phosphorylation. 
Now, let's move on to the electron transport chain. Now, the electron transport chain is basically a series of protein complexes that are found on the inner membrane of the mitochondria. And what happens is the NADH molecules and the FADH2 molecules basically transport or transfer the electrons onto our electron transport chain. And these electrons basically eventually end up reducing oxygen and forming water. And in the process, our electron transport chain establishes an electrochemical gradient between the intermembrane space of the mitochondria and the mitochondrial matrix. And one of the proteins of the electron transport chain known as ATP synthase utilizes the electrochemical gradient to synthesize our ATP molecules. Now, we see that a single NADH molecule produced in the mitochondrial nature creates three ATP molecules. So that means our NADH that is formed in pyruvate decarboxylation and the citric acid cycle, which both take place in the mitochondrial matrix, each produce three ATP molecules, while the NADH that is formed in the cytosol of our cell via glycolysis produces only two ATP molecules, and that's because we actually have to use a single ATP molecule per one NADH to transport that NADH from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix. Now, we also see that a single FADH2 that is formed in the citric acid cycle produces two ATP molecules and the process by which ATP synthase, one of the enzymes of the electron transport chain, phosphorylates ADP into ATP to produce our adenosine triphosphate is known as oxidative phosphorylation. So basically when ATP molecules are produced without using the electron transport chain as the case was in glycolysis and the citric acid cycle, that is known as substrate level phosphorylation. But using the electron transport chain to produce ATP, that is known as oxidative phosphorylation. Now, let's actually summarize our results by looking at the following table. So this table describes how many ATP molecules are actually formed either directly or indirectly by using glycolysis, pyruvate decarboxylation, and the citric acid cycle. So let's begin by looking at glycolysis. So glycolysis actually synthesizes two or a net result of two ATP molecules by substrate level phosphorylation. So we have a result of net two ATP molecules. Remember, glycolysis actually forms four, but it uses up two. So we form a net of two ATP molecules. Now, glycolysis also forms our two NADH molecules, and each one of these NADH molecules eventually end up in the electron transport chain, and because we have two NADH molecules formed in glycolysis, we form two times two, so four ATP molecules. For a total of six ATP molecules formed either directly or indirectly by glycolysis. Now, let's move on to pyruvate decarboxylation. So, this process does not form ATP molecules directly, but it forms two NADH molecules. And remember, a single NADH molecule formed in the mitochondrial matrix produces three ATP molecules on the electron transport chain. So, we have two multiplied by three each. So, we have six ATP molecules. So we have a total of six ATP molecules formed indirectly as a result of pyruvate decarboxylation. And finally, let's discuss the citric acid cycle. So it turns out that the citric acid cycle actually 
is a result or actually is involved in forming the majority of the ATP molecules. So in the citric acid cycle, we form six NADH molecules. And because this occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, we have six multiplied by three. So 18 ATP molecules are formed when the six NADH end up on the electron transport chain. Because we have two FADH2 molecules and each one forms two ATP, we have a total of four ATP molecules formed when the FADH2s are on our electron transport chain. And finally, we form two GTP molecules as a result of substrate level phosphorylation. And each one of these GTPs is transformed into our ATP. So we have two ATP molecules for a total of 24 ATP molecules that are formed in the citric acid cycle after our electron transport chain basically undergoes the oxidative phosphorylation. So we see that when a single glucose molecule is broken down in the process of aerobic respiration, we form a net result of 36 ATP molecules when we break down that single glucose molecule. And this concludes our summary of aerobic respiration.